to episode 5 of season 5 of Talk the Talk Real Grande Valley Stars. I'm your host, Alex Arabia, along with my co host, Isaac Medina. And today we have a very funny guest, a comedian from the Valley, Sonia Trevino. West Laco. <laughs> West Laco to Mercedes. 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 Yeah. She works out in West Laco. I work out in West Laco. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah, thank you've you. You've been a judge before in, in the talent show. Star Comics, Star have. Talent. And you're actually the second comedian we interview on the show because we've interviewed Raymond. Raymond, Raymond. yes, and good friend of mine, absolutely, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so tell us about you and how you got started with comedy. Okay, uh, let's see here. When did I get started? Well, oh gosh. For, first Since of all, what, what city are you from? I am. My family is from Mercedes. Okay. So Mercedes, yeah. Um, and you're 21. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I am 39. Actually, I know everybody's a little shocked now. <laughs> No, I'm 39. Uh, I've been doing comedy. Uh, <laughs> this month will be nine years. Nine years. Do I look at you or the camera? This is. No. I know. This is just me being me. Yeah, like, I'll both. make everything really, really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, a, little um, both. a little bit of both. But um, I've been watching. Like my father introduced comedy to me when I was a little kid. So I think I've just been into like SNL. Mm -hmm. Started watching SNL. Started watching you know comedy movies. So I've been wanting to do something in the comedy field since I was like nine. <laughs> yeah, so a little kid, but I started nine years ago. So, what, what made you start at that point specifically? Let's see here. Um, things weren't going well, and my dad taught me how to make fun of things when they're really bad. So things got really, really bad in my life, and it was one of those like, there's nowhere else to go but up. Do it. Do it now. So as one, a, as yeah. a coping mechanism. Absolutely, like anybody else. Right? So I didn't touch your hand. But yeah, absolutely, yeah. coping mechanism 100. So tell us uh, one of your first comedy skits or what was your first thing saying, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. Well, here's the thing. I've been writing jokes and comedy with my friends before I even began. I was writing for about 10 years with friends. Uh, we were doing more skit comedy, but one of my really good friends passed away. And when he passed away, it was one of those things like, okay, you know, we all, we all know how life, like how precious life is, but right then and there was one of those like, okay, Time to really do it because one day you're just it's all gonna end. So that's when I began, 2010. And when I began, uh, my actually the first time I was ever on stage was ridiculous. It was three minutes of blur. I just it was a whole blur. And then I got off stage. A real good friend of mine, he, who's a real good friend and mentor now, he says, you know what? I've never seen anybody go on stage for the first time and get laughs the way you did. So you want to do some more shows? And then it just from there it just kept going. Wow. And you had any performances ever since, like at Cine El Rey? Cine El Rey, that's every Wednesday. I'm not on the show every Wednesday, mm -hmm. but we have shows every single Wednesday. But I have the pleasure of, that's my home room. I'm getting ready to headline that room in January, January 8th. Come by. January 8th, I'm going to headline that room. And I've toured all over Texas so far. All over Texas. So far. I know there's a good, you know, more states to go but yeah. that, that's actually where we started filming our show at Cine El Rey. Really? We filmed uh, in different locations like the yes. yard and the roof. Oh awesome. Cine El Rey, that's Rey Cafe. Cafe. Oh right there. But right. We're, we're here for yeah. a few months already because we like this facility. Yes. So. And in Missy Sweets. Mm -hmm. Shout out to so Missy Sweets. So <laughs> complimentary drinks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on by. <laughs> so tell us, um, you know, when you first got started, like some of these role models that, that you would look up to. My dad. Probably, my dad, just my dad. He was my biggest role model. Uh, you know, he's the one who taught me how to just laugh at everything, because life gets super tough. Yeah. And he just taught me how to laugh, like pull my head out and just laugh. Like whatever's happening, you gotta laugh, because you can't you can't succumb to it all. You really can't. So uh, now that's my job to make it, help everyone else laugh. I don't care, even if it's just for a couple of minutes. But um, all comedians in general, anybody who does comedy. Movies, writing, directors, all those people that do stand up and just comedy in general, they are my role models. Cause and who do you really, really admire? Like from SNL, comedians? Oh gosh, that's hard. I can't pinpoint names. <laughs> I really can't because every one of them has done something for me. Um, stand up wise, I mean, from the beginning, one of my first stand up comedians was like Robert Townsend, believe it or not, um, Eddie Murphy, uh, Robin Harris. Uh, Richard Pryor, all of them, they were some of my first, oh, um, what's his name? People tell me I look like him all the time, Sam Kinison, because of the hat and the bigness mm -hmm. and whatever, but, um, but mostly my dad. He was the one, because he introduced me to everyone, so it's just been 
Yeah. And how's your relationship with local comedians like Raymond Orta, who has been on the show, one and of my, Mario Salazar? Yeah, well, my, that, Mario's one I was talking about. He's the one who put me on my first show, so he's a really close friend of mine. I love him to death, and his sister. And, um, I've been trying to get him on the show also, so maybe soon we'll Yeah, you, I'm sure he'll be more than ready to. Uh, Raymond, uh, also a really great friend of mine. I love Raymond to death. I love them both. They've actually. Oh, Right. Oh, Raymond is like the ultimate Cowboys fan. But um, they've opened so many doors up for me. They, oh, we're a team. I really, I mean, yeah, we all do our own thing, but in essence, we are a team. We, and we I think that's very important rather than there being negativity or yeah. envy. No, the camaraderie uh, is there. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. They're the best, right. and I love them very much. Yeah. So tell us how, how, how do you write comedy? What, what do you write about? What are the topics that you like to touch? My life. All the situations that I encounter. You have a daughter, right? I have a son. Two. You have two daughters, okay? Well, I, have a son. I know. I just met her. I have a son. He's 21. I know you don't believe it, but um, I had you a, look like 22. right. <laughs> I had a child at a very young age, so that's something to write about. I just write about my life and every single thing that happens in my life, my everyday situations. That's something to write about and make fun of everything. That's what I write about my life. But when you make jokes. Uh, it's in general about every, anything or like do you leave oh. politics aside or? Well, uh, yeah. I think a lot of other comedians do politics and I'm gonna let them do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, because that's something that, that, I don't know about you all, but that's really upsetting. Politics is extremely upsetting and I'm already at a heightened level with my life. Yeah, you guys can do better. <laughs> it's very yeah. divisive right Absolutely, I'm, I'm just, mm, yeah, but I don't do politics. Other politics. than that, it's pretty much anything goes, so. Yeah, I mean. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, there are certain areas that I don't really mess with because I don't know about them. I don't know about certain areas. I, you, you, you have to write about what you know. So there are certain things I'm not gonna know. I don't know what it's like to be a man. So I'm not gonna write about being a man, you know? So that's that, yeah. Sorry. So tell us, if you know, walk through us, like, start something impromptu. Oh, uh, you want a joke? Yeah, I want a joke. Uh, <laughs> I know. I was gonna ask you. Look at me. I'm wearing a Prince T-shirt. No, my jokes are not people. Our producer 13. is saying it can be rated up. No, I know. I was gonna ask if I can say bad words because that's me. Everybody knows me. I'm I'm pretty uncensored and because we're censored every single day of our lives and everything that we do. I don't want to be censored, but uh, um, you want a joke? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, okay, here's one that I always like. Okay, so um, I have a hard time meeting men. For some reason, men just fear me, and I don't know why. Um, this one time, I met a guy on a drunken night, and we exchanged phone numbers. So I texted him the next day, you know, because I'm desperate. And I said, hey, do you remember me? And he never responded to my text. I know. I was like, oh, he does remember me. <laughs> If we had an audience full of people, they would be left there. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good one for me. <laughs> what else? What's going on? Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped right now. <laughs> you can keep going. I think we should bring the complimentary drink. Yeah, we're <laughs> We need another drink. I didn't have anything. Yeah. What, what do you think has been your biggest achievement and your biggest obstacle so far in your career? You know, okay, biggest, okay, biggest achievement, beating the people that I meet. Just the diversity of people that I meet all the time, we're brought together by my jokes in my life, pretty much. That is one of my, that's my biggest accomplishment. Meeting the people that I meet and hearing them say, I've had a terrible day. I wasn't supposed to come out here. I didn't want to come out here, but I'm glad I did because you really made me laugh. You affect me, this, that. I've had people tell me some really terrible things that are happening in their lives and they're like, but I'm glad I met you and I'm like, I'm glad I met you. That's a, the biggest accomplishment. Um, obstacle. I'm a woman who does stand-up comedy. It's an obstacle, unfortunately. I get a lot of shit. You said I could cuss, right? <laughs> I do. It, it happens. So I'm it's a lot easier comedy. for men in comedy. Yeah. Well, think about it. How many men comedians do you know? Exactly. Do you, I'm, in, I'm in almost every other, you know, in, 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 in any uh, career or field, you know, it's mostly male dominated. So. I get, I mean, I'm cool with my bros and most of the people that I hang with, but I'm, unfortunately there are some people out there that are still, you know, wow, you can't be funny, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, that's an obstacle. So what do you do to overcome that? Also an obstacle is uh, being able to believe in myself in writing, that, I, sometimes I lose it there. Say that again, sorry. So, so what do you do to overcome that? You have to believe in yourself, that's it, you can't, listen, 
you're a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Like you, you have to believe in yourself. You can't listen to what people say because if you do, you might as well just be like dead or something. Because you have to believe in yourself. That's positive it. Positive thinking. That's it. You just mindset. tell yourself, no, you do, you're, you're not doing anything for me. This is my life. You know, like my dad taught me a long time ago. Like, you know, people. It, this is your life. You can't let people affect you the way that they do. So yeah. How does your family uh, take it, the fact that you're a comedian? Are they supportive? They are. Your um, child, your son? Yeah, well, my mother is extremely supportive because she lets me, you know, live in her house. So I think she is supportive. Um, she, I'm sure she gets really frustrated with me at times. They're just frustrated because I'm me. Sometimes I'm just real. My son, it doesn't matter. I could be like the funniest person in the world, but I'm still his lame mother, so it doesn't matter, yeah. But my son is very, very supportive of me. There have been a few times, you know, like any person, you get upset, and you're like, I want to quit. I want to stop doing this. And he's like, you're not quitting. So I know like, he really is like, oh. So, yeah. so where do you see yourself? Maybe you want to say hi to your yeah, son. You can say hi to your son. His name? <laughs> Saul. That's it. No, <laughs> that's my son. He's he's a he's a fantastic person. If it wasn't for him, my clothes would stay in the dryer forever. So thank you. I love you. <laughs> so so where do you see yourself in the next five, ten years from now? Future goals. Where do I see myself? Ooh. Um by that point I should finally be headlining uh, ongoing headlining in Tory everywhere. I should be there by that time. It should it should already be there, but you know, there's the whole believing in yourself thing, and sometimes um, it takes a little bit of time to to really. Man, I have, I know what I feel and want to say. Sometimes I just can't word it correctly. So. So you visualize yourself not just performing in the valley, but nationwide. Yeah. Across the United States. Of course. Wow. Doesn't everyone? Right. I do. Absolutely. Yeah. What advice would you give to our viewers if they want to follow in your footsteps? Let's say a female interested in comedy, what can she do to do to it? There? Just go to open mics, write down all your jokes, uh, don't listen to what anybody says, have fun, have fun, just go out there and have fun. But uh, write everything down and keep going to the open mics and get on shows, just do it. Don't listen to what anybody says, you gotta keep going because it's, uh, it's extremely rewarding and the people that you meet, it's just fantastic. I think I'm rambling. <laughs> Don't <laughs> ramble. Don't ramble. <laughs> How can someone get started? Like, where do you find those places to? Well, because um, this goes everywhere, right? Your open mics, just find usually venues all over towns, bars, venue. Um, what what else? Pretty much bars. They have open coffee houses. Some of them have open mics. Go sign up. That's your chance for a mic. That is your chance to be on stage. That is your chance to work your jokes with an audience. And I'm gonna tell you, it's going to be difficult, but you can't give up. Everything's difficult. Come on, you've come, you've come this long. You gotta keep going. So yeah, open mics, definitely open mics. Go to comedy shows, meet people, interact, so you can start getting on shows. How can people find you on social media? Ooh, Sonia Trevino. Sonia with an I, S O N I A Trevino. T R E V I N O. Um, Instagram. It's all one word. Ready? <laughs> Hot tomato toddy. The word hot, the word tomato, and the word toddy, T-O-D-Y. Um, and you can see it right here on the screen. Are you going to do that? Yes. Do so Cover right. this part. Just like, <laughs> okay, like yeah, hover around this. Uh, yes, please add me on social media. That's the only reason why I have it, to meet all of you all beautiful people. Has it been an important platform for your career? It's the only platform right now. Things have changed since mm -hmm. since uh, comedians back in the day. Uh, now you have to have it to yeah. just get anywhere. And for most, all of our guests, I guess, whether it's a boxer or a singer, an actor, mm -hmm. they all mention the importance of this platform. Social media is a thing. It's a big deal. Even though um, I have an extreme love-hate relationship with it, I don't know about you all, I'm a human. I want to interact with people. Social yeah. media is slowly taking that away from us. So everything with a balance and moderation. Absolutely. Very good. Balance moderation, unlike drinking. But yes. <laughs> uh, yes. What about uh, negative comments there? How do you handle those? You can't look at them. <laughs> you can't. Um, sometimes if I'm in a good mood, I'll, you know, if someone makes a negative comment, I'll just like laugh real hard. I'll do like, you know, the, the laugh react or ha ha with them. Um, every now and then I'll have like an inter you know, interaction, but well, because it's PR, it really is. Mm -hmm. They're going to go look at your stuff and might tell someone else. People, if you people have a bad experience, they tell 10 people, you know, so that's PR, it's PR, yeah, so. 
Yeah, awesome. So is there any closing remarks that you would like to share with our viewers? Closing remarks. Uh, love yourself. Be well. Your joy is up to you. Be happy. If you want to do stand-up comedy, go do stand-up comedy. If you want to, whatever it is you want to do, go do it. Because one day you're not going to be able to do it. Have great memories before you die. Like, for real. That was kind of morbid, but you understand. <laughs> That was about it, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Awesome, really thank excited. you. Great to meet you. I appreciate thank your time. Thanks. I appreciate you so being here. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. And we wish you the best in your career. Oh, thank you. Wish you all as well for this awesome show. Uh -huh. Thank you. And this was Talk to Talk Rio Grande Valley Star Season 5, Episode 5. Alex Arabia and Isaac Medina. Until next time. Bye.